I'm Jeremy and I'm a product specialist at Abstract. In this video, I'd like to show you how you can import a set of flat PBR texture maps into Instamat Studio so that you can extend its capabilities by adding dynamic properties or even being able to generate multiple variations of this material by changing the seed. We can then add this material to your user library so that it can be accessed within Instamat Studio or Instamat integrations for future projects. Let's take a look. So here we are in Instamat Studio, and just off screen, I have a couple of texture maps that I'd like to bring into Instamat so that we can generate a full PBR material and add procedural functionality to it, just as if it was created using an element graph. So let's create a new element graph now. I'll click Create New Project, choose Element Graph, and Create Project without a template. So now I'm just going to go over and grab my texture maps. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag them into the Package Management panel. So I've added them to the package so that if I want to later on share this material or move it around, all the associated assets with this package will move along with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these images and I'm going to drag them and drop them directly into the graph. And as you can see, we have our texture maps now represented in the graph here as nodes, as local variables. And these are going to be our image inputs that we're going to use to create our PBR material. So we have a base color map, a normal map, and a roughness map. So in order to start visualizing our material, I want to bring in another node here. I'm going to bring in the material make node. So I'll right click to bring up quick search, type in material make and hit enter. And this node is great because it gives us all of the inputs that we need to create a PBR material. So I'm going to start hooking this up. I'll bring in my base color here, connect it to base color. Let's connect the, uh, the normal into the normal input and also the roughness into the roughness input. Now to view the outputs of the material make node in our 3D viewport, I can just right click and choose preview as 3D material. And we can now see our material on our cube here in our viewport. And I can hold shift and right click to rotate the lighting here. Now, there's a very important thing to note about importing maps. So for some maps like the normal map and the roughness map, Instamat needs to know what kind of information we're working with, especially when it comes to linear data like this. And we need to tell Instamat that we're working in a linear color space. And we have a dedicated video on our YouTube channel that discusses this in further detail, which I'll link below in the description. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select my normal map. I'm going to go to the graph variable editor here and under color space, I'm going to set this to linear. Now take a look at my viewport. When I change this to linear, you can see that this has changed here and we're getting an accurate representation of our normal map now that I've set the proper color space. Now for the roughness map, because this is a grayscale input, Instamat's smart enough to know that it's automatically going to set it to linear. But as you can see, it's very important to be able to set our color spaces up properly properly when we're importing maps like this. Now, you'll notice I only have three maps here. And for our PBR material, we need quite a bit more. We need our metalness, our ambient occlusion, and our height information. And so what we now need to do is we need to generate a few more maps in order to have that full PBR material. And we can do that with some nodes in the element graph. So let's start off by creating a height map from our normal input. So I'm going to drag a connection off and type in normal to height. Hit enter. And now you can see that Instamat's been able to generate a height map for us from our normal input. I can go ahead and view this in the image viewer. You can see this beautiful height map that's been created from our normal data. And I'll go ahead and connect this to our height input of the material make. And you can see now that we're starting to displace the geometry on our preview mesh here. Very, very cool. And so now that I've created a height map, I can also generate ambient occlusion information as well. So I'll branch off a connection here from our height map that we've just created and type in height to ambient occlusion. And now we've quickly generated our ambient occlusion map as well. And I'll go ahead and drop this into the ambient occlusion input. And now we have some of that nice uh, contact shadow information in the crevices of this cracked stony ground material that we have. 
So we were able to take our initial maps that we started with and quickly generate the additional data that we need to create a full PBR material using just a few nodes in the element graph. And you'll notice I didn't create a metalness map, but that's because in this case, uh, the metalness for this, uh, this map is completely black. So we can set that to black here just using the material make node with this color widget. It makes it really easy. So if we needed to, we could generate some metalness information if we needed to, but in this case, we don't need it for this example. Now, next up, I want to show you how we can add some additional functionality to our material by applying some material effects. Now, the first thing I want to add is some additional dirt to this ground to really ground it in the environment, as it were, uh, no pun intended. So I'm going to enter a mode here called link category mode. If you take a look at these pins, our output pins of the material make, if I enter link category mode, it's going to combine those related pins together. And it makes it really easy for us to work with material information that has all of that channel information. So I could branch off a connection here from material make. And you'll notice quick search recognizes that we're working with material information. And I can choose from some of these effects that we have in Instamat. So in this case, I'm going to add some dirt by using the material effect dirt node. And I want to preview the outputs of this node in our viewport. So I'll just right click and choose preview as 3D material. And I can go ahead and increase the dirt level. And you can see slightly here that we can add some dirt into the natural crevices and places where dirt would accumulate. And I can increase the ambient occlusion intensity and also go ahead and add uh, some grunge as well. So I'll just increase the grunge factor here, looking really nice. And so now if I increase and decrease the dirt level, it makes it really easy to add that effect. And so what I'd like to do is expose this functionality to the user so that later on when we reuse this material that we're creating, they can control the dirt level. So I'm just going to go ahead and right click dirt level and choose expose as input parameter. And you can see we now have that parameter available in our graph. And so if I click on the graph to view the graph level of our inputs, we can control the dirt level from here. Now, next up, I want to go ahead and add some dust. So just like before, I'll branch off a connection, choose dust, view the outputs here, and we can add this nice thin looking layer of dust. Again, I can control this with the dust level and I want to expose this too. So I'll go ahead and choose expose as input parameter. And now we have our dust. And finally, let's add some water. So I'll branch off a connection, choose water. And just with a single node, we can add this really nice looking water effect to our ground material. Let's increase the water level. That's looking nice. And let's expose this as well. And so now I can control all these parameters from the root level of my material, like the water like this. Now, before continuing on, I need to create some graph outputs so that when we want to use this material, Instamat knows what information the graph is generating. So what I can do, you know that we're in this link category mode here. So if I untick this, you can see that the material effect water node exports all of these maps that we need for a PBR material. So all we need to do is create graph outputs from the material effect water node to be able to pass on this information into the next step of our pipeline or our workflow in Instamat. So again, I'm going to go back into link category mode and I'm just going to right click and choose expose output parameters. And now I can expose all of these at once. Once. So I'll select them all. And because our material doesn't have an emissive channel, I'm just going to disable that one and choose expose. And now Instamat has automatically created all the graph outputs that we need for our material. Now, the last bit of functionality I'd like to add to my material is the ability to generate multiple variations of it automatically, just as if this material was created initially in Instamat Studio using the element graph or with Instamat's material layering, for example. And to do this, we can use a node called material synthesis. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some room here uh, just after the material make node. I'm going to hit command or control and then right arrow to push over the nodes that are to the right of my cursor here. And I'm going to insert the material synthesis node right after the material make because I want to be able to synthesize the new material information before I apply my effects. This means that if I adjust my effects, I don't need to reprocess the, uh, the synthesis operation every time I change the amount of dirt I want, for example. So just after material make, I'm going to right click the connection and type in material synthesis and hit enter. And very quickly, you're going to see that Instamat's going to be able to generate new material information from our material make node, which has maps from our static images. 
So there you go, you can see that I can quickly just orbit around here and you can see this is a newly synthesized variation of our material. And so with this single node here, the material synthesis node, we've been able to give our material procedural functionality to create limitless variations all from a set of static texture maps. So I can demonstrate this by just changing the seed of the graph here, and you'll see that we can now quickly generate a new version of this material. So now let's go ahead and finish assembling our material here. I'm just going to click on the graph to bring up the information in the graph object editor panel, and let's give our material a name and a category. And I'll go ahead and hit the checkbox to commit that. Now, I could add a description if I want to, but I think that's all right. So now what I need to do is I need to save this Instamet package into my user library folder. Now, this is commonly found in your user's documents folder under Instamat in the library subdirectory. So now that we've saved our material into our user library and we can access it in Instamat Studio and also in Instamat's integrations, I just quickly wanted to demonstrate how we could use it using a different project like this material layering project that I've just created. So I've just gone and created a new project, chose material layering, and I've brought in this dead grass field material, which is built into Instamat's material library. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Matte Library panel here. And I'm going to search for our material cracked ground. There it is. And all I have to do is just drag this in to use this material to naturally blend the material with our dead grass field. So I can go over to the cracked ground and I can go to the channels here and I can go ahead and offset this to allow more or less grass to be seen. So let's go ahead and lower the cracked ground. There we go. I can also adjust the contrast here. We can control the grass and where it gets positioned. We can make it so that the grass only fills in the crevices of our material. And this is great because now I can go to the cracked ground layer and go to the options here for the element, and I can adjust the parameters that I've exposed for our cracked ground. So I can increase the dirt amount, for example, and you can see it quickly processes and adds more dirt to the crevices. I can also increase the dust. And if I wanted to, I could go ahead and add some water here as well. And now I can dial in the settings that I need for this particular material and continue to work with it. And so now that I've blended these two materials together, I could go ahead and save this material, this material layering project, out and use that in my projects if I need to. So what's really great here, let me just go ahead and turn off the water level here in this example, is now I can create unlimited variations of this material that I just created. I can go to the random seed option here for the, the entire project. And it's just going to recalculate and generate a brand new material. And because our, our dead grass field, which was created with the element graph, is procedural, but also our cracked ground, which now has a material synthesis to be able to generate new variations, I can now generate countless variations of this material uh, using image synthesis, material synthesis, and by changing the seed, making this material uh, an infinitely reusable material for all future projects. Thanks for watching this video on creating materials from flat PBR texture maps in Instamat Studio. Instamat's element graph makes it possible to create textures, materials, and entire 3D assets using Instamat's vast library of powerful nodes. Now, to learn more about these nodes, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Here we have an ever-expanding library of video content covering the ins and outs of Instamat. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, drop us a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe. For the latest news about Instamat, please visit our website and follow us on Twitter. You can find all the links in the video description below. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next one.